All right, are you ready? Today we're gonna solve another exercise, uh, which is not gonna be very difficult, but nonetheless, it has to be done. So let's check it out. We have to create a function that divides parameter A by B and stores the result in the int pointed by B. All right, which is this one. So this argument, uh, this pointer argument. It also stores the reminder of the division of A by B in the int pointed by mode. All right. So we have this function that doesn't return any value. It takes two integers and stores the division and the mode operation, so the reminder, into these two variables. These two variables uh, are stocked inside the main function. To understand this silly exercise for you now, you just watch my previous video on the swap function, in which I explain kind of everything you need to know. And you are super ready to go, I think. You can very easily perform this exercise by yourself, so close the video and go on. <laughs> if you want to see my solution, then let's go. All right, this is my solution. As you can see, the program is very short because it is a super easy program. In my main function, I declare these four variables. I have my div and mode variable. These are indeed the variables where I will stock the division and the reminder of my two integers. My two integers are n and n1, and I call my div mode function. I give as an input my two integers, and as usual, as you shall know, I give the address of my div and the address of my mode variable. These two variables which are inside the main scope function. Okay? Then I simply call the print function in which I will print uh, the value n and n1, and then the, um, the result of the division and the mode operation namely the reminder. Plain vanilla easy. Let's check the function. As you can see, I have my arguments, which are the two integers, and then I have uh, the pointers. A pointer to an integer, which is called div, and a pointer to another integer, which is called mod. All right? As you can see, the instructions are very, very simple. In my conditional, I say if b. If b, what does it mean? Well, b, as you know, is an integer. And as you shall know, in C, we represent the value for truth with all the values different from zero. So every value but zero represent true, the logic value true. The value zero itself represents the value false, the Boolean value false. So in this case, I have my integer, which is a value, which is a number that represents a value itself, an integer value, but can also represent the value for falsehood or truth. So here I just simply say if b, if b is zero, well, it, it means that this condition is false. If b, the value is zero, the condition is false. If b is all the value but zero, it means that this condition is true. So I don't need to be uh, so verbose and write something like this. If b different from zero, right? I don't need it because of the reason I just come to tell you. I want to use the value itself the variable itself as a boolean value okay of course this is more readable this is uh, as you want it is the, the right way to write code but in real world you will never find something like that you will always find like uh, like this you will always find a very concise way of typing if b if b all right we all understand what, what this means <laughs> okay so I just want you to really understand immediately the, the real world. When you are going to go on a daily basis on Stack Overflow, you will see something like that. Pedagogically, it is okay to write B different from zero. Okay? But it, it is the same. It is the same. So we understood the syntax of this conditional. But the meaning of this conditional, well, you clearly know that you cannot divide a value for, for zero, right? You cannot say 7 divided by zero. This is, this is wrong. This makes no sense. In C, indeed, we get um, undefined behavior when uh, we perform a division by zero, or we can get an error. I want to show you a program where I make a division by zero, and I want to see with you the results. Here it comes. Very silly. I have my main function with my integer variable 42. Then I say, OK, can you print me this integer divided by zero? As you can see, I get a warning. Beneath, I just perform a, a 0 divided 42. This is perfectly legal, and I get 0 as a result. But let's check this code, right? OK, let's compile it. Uh, as you see, 
we have a warning, a warning nonetheless, allows you to compile and run the code. This is just saying, hey, what, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, division by zero is undefined. You see this warning? I nonetheless run the program and I get uh, terminated by signal floating poi exception. I want to explain to you what is a floating poi exception because one, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, the second point, we don't really care, right? We just want to perform an exercise. Keep in your mind that you cannot perform division by zero. So that's why I just say, hey, is B different from zero? Let's make it sure that the divisor is different from zero. Otherwise, everything will blow up. Okay, that's basically it. Maybe I give you some links to good resources to understand why we cannot divide by zero. It is kind of interesting. Then very silly, very simply, I just say, hey, the reference this pointer div. So go inside the address, which is inside this div and stock inside there the value a divided by b. The following operation is the, the same. I put inside the address that I find inside my pointer, the modulo operation, a ah, modulo e. Okay, super silly. So with these two commands, with these two instruction, I go to change these two variables, which are in my main scope. Again, you shall understand the concept of functions scope. Okay, then we just run this program and uh, let's check if everything is fine. Okay, as usual, I compile and then I just run. All right, as you can see, I have 42 divided by 21 equal to with a reminder zero. This is a super silly program. Okay, I think we are ready to jump directly into the, the following one, which is FT Ultimate Deep Mod. Basically, it's the same exercise, a little bit fancier, and we're gonna solve in it. We have to create a function this time that divides parameter A by B. The result is division is stored in the int pointed by A. Sorry. The reminder of the division is stored in the int pointed by B. So, which is the trick here? Well, we have to create a temporary variable, right? It is a swap problem. If you understood my swap video, plain vanilla for you, go on, pause the video, dislike, <laughs> and go on with your exercise. If not, okay, let's go on with, the, with our code. This is the default program. As you see, I have my main function. Here I declare my variable A and B. This time, the program is a little fancier. I've included also my standard library to use the random function. The random function is just, as you surely know, function to have a random value. Uh, in this case, I use the modulo 101, so I have all the values ranging from zero to 100. In A, I store this random value, and in B, I store another random value. As you can see here, I just make the modulo operation with random, and then I say, okay, plus one, just in case I get zero here. All the time I just plug plus one, so I know that it's not gonna be zero, and I have my division by zero. It can also be by zero, by the way, because here I have my control, so this won't be a problem. But anyway, first of all, I print my two values, A and B, for my random values, and I make a very simple division and modulo operation, and I print the value. This is just a check for me to see if my function uh, did its job properly. I call my ultimate division mode, and I give the address A and B, so my two variables where I will stock my division and modulo. And then I just simply print the results. All right, let's jump into the, the function. Here, I need a temporary variable. Again, I prompt you to watch my swap video. And then I say, if at B, so at B, what is at B? Again, the same principle as before. I want to see if my divisor is zero or not. I use the value zero to represent false, and every value but zero to represent true. Easy, simple, vanilla here. And I make my usual swap. Temporary is equal to the value which is in A. And I say, inside A, please put the division A and B. And inside B, what do you put? Well, you put the modulo operation by temporary, which is A, the previous A, modulo B. Super simple. This is a normal swap. And let's check it out if it works properly. Okay, okay compile and run. I have some operations here. Uh, 41 divided by 10, I have 4, 1, 4, 1. Perfect. 31, 9, 3, and 4. It works. As you can see, everything matches. Everything works properly inside my, my function. So the swap works accordingly and, and everything is super fine. All right, that's basically it for this function. And as usual, 
I wait for the next video. Congrats if you understood everything. Understand really, 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 really well pointers, stack, and function frames. This is all the jazz you can see. If you understand this concept, you're golden. You're done. You're you're the boss. <laughs> Keep going on. Congrats. Goodbye, my friend.